So here we go, classwork 24. We're gonna be doing constructions. And remember please that underneath this piece of paper, you should have a, either a stack of paper or a binder or a book or something like that. It makes it easier to stick the needle into the papers. First space, we're gonna be construct in parallel lines through a point off the line. We've done several constructions of parallel lines previously. Now we're specifically doing one through a specific point off the line. So let's start by giving ourselves a line. We're gonna get one parallel to this, but not just anywhere up here. We're gonna produce it through some specific point that I'm gonna draw. And again, we've done several constructions previously, and they've all dealt with a transversal and then copying either corresponding angles or alternate interior angles. So let's do the same thing. The trick is this time, my transversal is not just random, my transversal specifically contains this point. And whereas previously we drew a transversal and then put a point on it, we're just doing these in reverse. We drew the point first and we're putting the transversal through it. But the process is then the same. I wanna copy this angle up to the corresponding location here. I begin with a reference arc meaning I'm gonna choose whatever length I want on my compass and make an arc as long as it hits both my red transversal and my blue parallel line. And then I'm gonna copy that same radial length, the same compass measurement up to the point up here and make an arc. Now you'll notice in my case, I didn't have enough room up here because my arc doesn't hit my transversal. I need it to, because I need to find that point of intersection. So I'm gonna come back and use my straight edge to extend my transversal just a little bit so that it hits that line, hits the arc. Now what I wanna do is measure how wide open my angle is. How big is the mouth of this alligator? And whatever length that is, I'm gonna come up and apply it from here, which should identify where my other mark should be over here. So I'll take my compass, put the needle on the intersection of the transversal and my reference arc. And then I adjust my compass until it's just the right size that it goes through the intersection of this arc and my parallel line. And I leave a mark there to show that I copied that. And then I pick that up and reproduce the same thing for my other reference arc. So my needle is on the red transversal intersecting with my reference arc. And I use the same length that was saved in my compass to produce this other arc. The point of intersection of these two arcs when tied together with my original point should give me a line that is excuse me, parallel to my original line. And I'll make a notation to show that this angle is the same as this angle. And my two lines are parallel. Second skill, constructing perpendicular. lines 
through a point off the line starts the same way. Give yourself a line and some point off that line. Don't choose a point that's right in the middle. You don't want it to be hovering over the midpoint. You want it to be off to one side or the other. Now you may remember, we worked on constructing perpendicular bisectors, right? Where I put my needle at the end point and I extended how long? More than Good, more than halfway, and copy the same from the other side, more than halfway, and it gives me that nice little football. That would give me a perpendicular line, but it would be through the midpoint, not through this point. So what I need to do is find two points that are the same distance away from right underneath this point. So I'm gonna produce an arc. My needle goes on the point, and I'm gonna adjust my compass to be just enough that I know this arc hits my line in two places. I just have to ensure that it hits it once over here and once over here. Now, because these are equidistant from our starting point, I know that if I were to construct a perpendicular bisector, it'll go right through that. So from these two intersections, I'm gonna go more than halfway. And then that same length from the other point of intersection. And that should produce my football directly aligned with my point that was off the line. And this is perpendicular. Okay, let's go to number three. Constructing perpendicular lines. through a point off the line, the 2.0, version 2.0. In other words, another way of doing the same scale. This way we're about to take on is easier. It's definitely fewer steps. There's an additional opportunity for you to make a mistake, but it's not a hard skill. Step one, put your needle in the right-hand end point of your segment here. And adjust your compass so that your lead is right on the point and make an arc, a half circle, semicircle, right through that point. Then pick your compass up, move to the other end point, and again, adjust your compass to go right through the point. And make an arc that over, overlaps the first arc. Is it still a football? Yeah. Certainly a lopsided football. This one's flattened, right? Someone's let the air out of this one. This is gonna raise some questions when they're 
big bets on the line. But if I connect these two endpoints, it still will produce for me a perpendicular line through the point off the line. So what is the possible place for error, possible opportunity for error in here? Well, sort of. This point of intersection is being connected to this point of intersection. In other words, I'm connecting two points with a line. Two points are collinear. Always, sometimes, or never. Always. Up here, I had three points. I had this point of intersection, this point of intersection, and this point. And three points of intersection are always, sometimes, or never collinear. Sometimes. So the only time these three would make a straight line for me is when I did the construction correctly. Whereas down here, I could screw this up completely and end up with this point way over here. And still, I'd be able to connect the two and think it's a perpendicular line. So the other method is better, but this is certainly easier. And if you do it correctly, it's fine. Any questions on that? Okay, fourth one. Constructing perpendicular. Lines. Through a point on the line. And again, please don't choose a point that is right in the midpoint because that defeats the purpose. Any guesses? Jackie? Very good. It's a lot like what we did here where you tried to find two points so that are right distance away. We're gonna put our needle on the dot and we're gonna choose a length of our compass that hits the line in two places again. One there and one there. Don't I know that this dot is exactly halfway between those two? Because they're each a radius distance away. And now, from those two points, I'm gonna go more than halfway and make my football. Same from the other side. Again, another reason why our first skill up here for off the line was better, because it teaches us something that we can apply to points on the line. They're the same skill, really. I started from this, my needle on the dot, and I made a line over here, an arc, and another matching one on this side. And then I used those two as my starting points to go more than halfway and more than halfway. So you've now figured out how to construct parallel lines specifically through some point you care about, and then perpendicular lines either through a point off that line or through a point on that line. Please flip this over. And I'd like you to construct 
a right trapezoid. Do you remember what a right trapezoid looks like? It has one set of parallel sides, one side that is perpendicular, and the other one that's slanted. Go. Okay, so we're going to desmos.com. Once we get here, you should log in. Use your school-based Google ID and get yourself logged in. That way, when you create a project, you can save it and say like fourth period, geom, desmos. So our goal today is to demonstrate how we can use Desmos, a graphing tool, to draw things like this. G, E, O, M. I'm letting you do short of geometry, right? Just geom. So the goal is to create each of these line segments using like Y equals MX plus B. Now, let's make this our O and this our E and this our G. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the E. We're gonna make nice big blocky letters for E. So this whole left wall needs to be a segment. What kind of equation gives us a vertical line? Is it Y equals MX plus B? X equals. Just X equals. All these points along this line have an X value of negative six. This is negative six, zero. This is negative six, one. This is negative six, two. This is negative six, three. What's common to all these points is that they have an X value, X equals negative six. And once I type that in, it shows me what the line is. It matches the color over here saying it's a red line. But I just want this little part. I don't want the whole line, I want a segment. So after this, I'm gonna open up squiggly brackets. And I'm gonna say that I don't want all these Y values down here or the Y values up there. I want simply zero as my smallest Y value. Zero is less than Y, but I also want Y to be less than four. And notice that that restricts my range so that even though the function is, well, it's not a function, X equals negative six, it's only limited to from a Y of zero up to a Y of four. Now I wanna do the top here. What's the top of my E? Y equals four, but I don't want the whole thing. I wanna restrict my domain, my X's. My lowest X value is gonna be negative six. And that's going to be less than whatever X value I choose, which is also less than negative four. In other words, I'm trapping the X's between negative six and negative four. What would this part down here, the bottom of the E look like? Zero. What's zero, X or Y? Y equals zero. In fact, can I copy this one? Highlight it, copy, and paste. But I don't want Y equals four, I want Y equals zero. And that's gonna give me this piece here. Five, I'm following right along with you, Mr. Erlen. I feel good about this. Three, I'm sort of there. I've got a little misstep. I gotta clear something up. One, oh, was my computer supposed to be on? The domain and range is put in with um, squiggly brackets right after the function. Uh, 
on your computer, there's shift right next to P, to the right of P. What's this one here? Two, right? I'm going to say instead of y equals zero, I'm going to copy this and just put it back here. But instead of y equals zero, I'm going to put y equals two. And that's close, but it's like one of those weird funky E's. Shouldn't this segment be shorter? How do I make this segment a little bit shorter? Ellie? Negative yeah, from negative six, not all the way to negative four, but only to make may negative five, or maybe negative 5.5, .5, depending on, oh, no, that's not right, negative 4.5, if you want like that longer leg there. And you should have an E now. Smith, you had a question on that? Or did you get that? You got it? Okay. Let's do the O next. The O is going to be a box right around here. See if you can do that one while I circulate a little bit and check on people. Okay. We will have some opportunities to make some more challenging shapes when we do the M over here. So I'm going to skip the O for a second and do the M. I'm going to have a vertical line at two. So X equals two. I need to restrict my domain to zero is less than Y or my range, which is less than four. There's my left side of it. X equals four. I'm going to restrict my range from zero to four. But now I need to get something that makes like the M part of this. So there's a couple ways you can do it. One is you could figure out what the slope is supposed to be. Now this is not gonna be a vertical or horizontal line. It's gonna be something like y equals three x minus six or something like that. It's gonna have a slant to it. And you could just play with it and go, well, I mean, that's sort of okay, but I need it to be over to the right a little bit more than that. So one way to do it is I could just keep adjusting this and guessing. Another way to do it is I could use what's called the vertex form, where I say, I'm going to put it in a format of three times X minus something. And that minus something is exactly how far over it shifts. That's shifting from zero over to two. I want to move it over here to three. So I'll put an X minus three in here. No, because that's there for three. I want it up there for three. So that's going to be a little bit still kind of a guessing game. And now it doesn't quite hit. I want it to be a little bit flatter. So maybe I actually want it to be not three, but 2.75 as the slope. That's pretty close. Maybe that's not quite where I need it to be. No. Kind of a guessing game here. So the other alternative is I could put in exactly what I want. like three as my slope and I want it to go over to three here. In other words, I want it to be right here, but get up to this point. So now I figure out how far up I have to bring it to make it match. Like plus five. No, that's too high. Plus three, plus two. It's going even lower than that. Plus 1.5. 1.25. That looks about right. And then I'd restrict the range that way. That's a lot of guessing work still. I want to go from the point three, which is less than X, which is less than four. I don't love that. Let's make it easier to work with. I'm going to put in a generic equation, y equals mx plus b. And what Desmos says is, okay, do you want to have a slide for m and b? And what that means, get rid of this base thing here. 
is that now I've got this. I can adjust exactly where I want it to go by dragging this slide thing around. Let's go to the left side first. It's going to have to be a, a negative slope. <clears throat> I don't want it to go up. That's pretty good, but I want to go a little bit more. And then I can restrict my domain based on that. I want to go from two, which is less than X, which is less than three. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? If you create another one, make sure that you don't use M and B again. You need to use different variables now. Y equals NX plus C maybe. And you could then create additional points for that. Um, when you put in the variables, there should be a little button there that says add a slide for N and add a slide for C. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, you'll have to put in your restrictions. Uh, so this would go from three is less than X, which is less than four. And then I'm going to go a little bit more down here. By putting in variables, instead of y equals 2x plus 5, I put in nx plus c. Um, and, and when I do it, it should say add sliders for the two variables that I've added in. Okay, once again. Your goal is to produce this, take a screen capture, and submit it as homework 21. If you want to go for the extra credit, then you need to do it slanted. Let's see if I've got anybody who's done that yet. All right, here's a student who's done the diagonal one for you, just so you can see what it looks like. It could look like that. Okay. All right, you've got the rest of the period to work on this.